Hey everyone, this is a uh, Black Woman Seven here, and today is the day. And today we have a uh, KCBL Finals as we are up against uh, Love or Asha Chris or Bookie Clips as that's which I think that's his YouTube. So um, I will leave a link in the description to uh, his YouTube channel if you guys want to like subscribe to him. So yeah, without further ado, we'll be talking about. We're going over our KCBL finals team week this this matchup, so yeah. I think it's been like about over a month since I last uploaded for this league and honestly um I didn't think we'd finish but we finally did so um this is it so for the finals so yeah um regarding this matchup um I think me and both me and uh love or both clips Pretty much had like uh, we were from the same bracket or same uh, bowl, and we battled each other in week four to decide to buy. And now we're going to be deciding uh, our who's going to be the champion for this season of week uh, or of the final week of KCBL. So yeah. Now looking at his late team, as you see this on the on the right hand on the right hand side. Uh, Love has a team of Kieran B, Magazo, the CDY, Drapian, Alexand, Steelix, Mega Dancy, Starmie, Kelder, Jellison, and Raichu. Now, half his team is like, well, and also, um, I would like to mention for last time that, like, uh, Z moves are unrestricted, so anyone bar Mega Dancy can have a Z move user. Have a Z move, so yeah. Um, basically, um, this is a very interesting uh, matchup, if you ask me. Um, as you can see, he has a team full of pivot, uh, like wall breakers and tip pivot options, like Kieran B, uh, Mega Dancy, Kunkelder are his main wall breakers, and you see Magnazel, Decidueye, um, Raichu being his pivot options as well. So now looking at his team, um. I, there, there's some obviously his Steel Dragon Fairy core is probably insane if you think about it. Kieran B, Mega Dancy, and uh, Magnezone, Felix, if you want to consider those two. And he has like two good water type Pokemon it's Starmie, Jelson. And then like Drapian just to stop out any posing psychic type Pokemon, which we do have here, so I wouldn't be surprised if he brings uh, Drapian again. So um, if I had to say which Pokemon. You would likely bring the most, or most likely, one of the six. I would say, I think you would still bring like something similar to that of week four. The only difference is that Kieran B, it would be more offensive. I don't know. Maybe with a Z move user. I don't know. But, or the same with Magnazone. Well, maybe it would be much more offensive, like maybe Choice Dex, or even a Salt Vest, or something like that. And Diancy, I don't even know if he brings Diancy. Like, um, as you see, um, like the thing with Diancy is that it has good favorable matchups in almost most of my mons, except the fact that like if 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 he gives me a free turn, then that said Pokemon can actually Oko it back. Say like Scizor against like a, he can't just freely go for his power fire against Scizor, so that could be a possible option though. <laughs> Or Sylveon can pretty much take on Mega Dancy or whatever the hell that is. So, and Scarf Crook, and that could also be a Scarf Crocodile, so which I may or may not be bringing all set three. So yeah. Um, and also, uh, I think he'll bring one of his Water types, either Starmie or Jellicent. Not so which one, but Starmie has been brought every game, so I think very likely. Though Jellicent has. Been doing some good amount of work for him. Same with the Raichu. Not Raichu, but the uh the pseudo eye, so yeah. Um and for that, um I also also think that uh Kunkelder will likely be his uh final mon, which to be honest I'm not so I'm not surprised since it is like the kill leader in this league if you count like uh the first four weeks and the uh, the and other three weeks he's been in when he faced off against I think uh Hug, Mav, and who else was the other guy? I think Zerman. So yeah. Uh so that's pretty much it. Like, 
uh, I personally I think uh, of the three of of his eleven mods, Kieran B, Magnezo, and and Dancy are the most scary, as well as King Kelder, given certain Pokemon matchups. Like, um, of course I I, I wanted to bring my there are certain Pokemon I wanted to bring, but like this season, but of course like because of this matchup it, it kind of like the fact that he has a Kieran B and a Magnezo kind of invalidates Rotomo in a way. He just has all these like possibly special defensive Pokemon and the coverage options. And same with the uh, Quillfish and Doc. This Magus is like the speed tier is something that I really find very problematic here, so yeah. I don't think I was ever gonna bring it. And Sock, I really wanted to bring Sock, but you know you can't really do much with it, so yeah. There. So then there's Quillfish. Then like there are the other Pokemon that I always also questioning, like Meltink and uh, Talonflame, which you see one of the one of them there. So I'll explain that in a bit. So um, basically, this matchup is going to be looking like a very top-heavy team again, once again with my higher picks. Again, as you'll see um, on the screen, this is my team. So so let's start off with the first Pokemon, and I think this is like the Oh, like, this is already, like, the first major deviation I have from the other team I have here. And hopefully it just doesn't sh Oh, well. <laughs> At least it doesn't show exactly, like, the team I was thinking of. <laughs> well, as you guys don't see, like, my team, so yeah. Alright, here it is. So this is my old team. Um, right here... Basically, I brought a uh, Z Draco Latios, uh, Togolo Manaphy, Cleric Support, Dolpion, Crocodile, with some, uh, which is Max Max and Azor with Sword Stance. And finally, we brought Meltink with Rocks. I think the only reason why I brought Meltink with Rocks compared to like now is like, um, compared to like the yeah, Atalanta thing was because of King Kelder. Because I, I didn't want to give King Kelder uh, like a chance to uh, sweep. Or just get a kill every turn, especially if love is manages to predict around that. So yeah, so hence why we have this talent flame. Now, for originally I wasn't really keen to bring talent flame the first time, but after a while I decided, I like and then even like into some of my like my early prep I decided I was gonna bring Meltink, but then I realized. That again, like Kelder puts a lot of pressure on me to like make predictions because, um, like he has, he's likely gonna carry Flame more once again. It'll probably be like Fighting Stab, Drain Punch, Mock Punch, maybe Facade, Knock Off. That's already good coverage. Or like something like Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Poison Jab, or Set Pokemon. So yeah. So the, so this is what I came up with. So. I, this Talon Flame set with Choice Band, so um, the reason why I have Choice Band instead of like Sword Snaps is because I didn't want to have uh, to set a whole risk setting up, and I just wanted more immediate power. And the thing is, Choice Band would rocks up on the field pretty much two kills his entire team with the, the appropriate move set. Now, and that is amazing. Like, um, with Choice Band, I actually do like fifty six percent damage to Kieran B minimum. That's just, that's great for me. And then to Mon, like, Jealous, and I did, like, around 48% against, like, max defense. And, and also, and then also with Starmie, I get, it's a, it's a roll. I do, like, around, like, 95% on, like, no bulks Starmie, but of course, if I get chip or get rocks up, that ensures Yoko to me, so, yeah. And, of course, Flare Blitz, Oko is a Magnezone, Decidueye. And uh, Raichu with the appropriate moves, it's, it's, and also two shots steel lake as well. So, um, and against Mega Deancey, um, since this is a Mega Turn One League, I will be able to like inflict heavy damage with Brave Bird or Blur Blitz like twice if he tries to switch in on with his regular with his Mega form as well. So, if he takes fire damage, like, and he tries to switch in, then he's gonna get two shotted. By a combination of flare, like by two Brave Birds or Flare Blitzes. <laughs> but preferably, I would like go with Brave Bird. So. 
Um, I do have stealing because, uh, again, coverage. Coverage is king in this game. So this ensures Ioko Dancy for sure. And I have something to like outspeed like said Pokemon. So because the other Pokemon I have, like go to two I have, I have to risk hit, having Hidden Power Fire or uh, being hit, being or losing a speed tie. So yeah. And we love, we all love uh, apparently that scenario against a lot of Mega Lot of not Lotios versus a Dancy. Not like that happened. So, um, so anyways, um, I do have Roast here because uh, there is a possibility that I may uh, lose my choice band to like a knockoff user like Grapian or uh, or Kinkelder. So I do have it, and I do have Roost just to heal me myself up back up so um and that's about it really i was thinking about tailwind on u-turn i think u-turn might have been the superior option here but i just felt like you know roost gives me a little bit of lo lo longevity and whatnot so yeah um not really much to say about fox the uh, tile flame it's just that like uh it pretty much two shots two shots his entire team so yeah and i will say that um Yes, I am aware that Brave Bird is nerfed, or Gale Wings is nerfed in this generation, but to be honest, I just need damage. Like, Talonflame is like more of a, more so of a wall breaker this game than like a, than like, you know, a, a sweeper. This, this time around, so yeah. But it can, uh, but it can, uh, clean a team if he's like, it, it can clean uh, Love's entire team if I, if he puts him in range, so yeah. That's why I wanted to have this guy. For this matchup, so then we have uh Calm Mind Latios yet again, but the only difference is I have uh Hidden Fire Ground, Psychic, Calm Mind, and Bruce, so and the EVs is probably whatever, so yeah. Now, to be honest, I wasn't so sure about bringing a Calm Mind Latios. Uh, wait a minute, <laughs> I guess the EVs fucked up again. I don't know why it always says that, but I don't know. I wonder if that played a role in that game. So, like, I'm just looking at it, just like, wait, why is it 31 again? 31 IVs. Because, like, when I did this, like, originally, um, okay, when I did this, I had to like factor in level 50s and shit. So, uh, and also like how Showdown has, I don't know, I don't know why Showdown always does this. Okay, I'm a, okay. I'm not gonna talk. Uh, Okay, I, you know, I'll just let's say what I'm talking about right now. I know it's a kind of a divergent, quick diver, divergent path here, but still, like, um, I don't know why Showdown always does this, where like it changes the hidden power, or it doesn't change the hidden power exactly to uh, 31 instead of like the actual first. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into it. So, but anyways, uh, I have Psychic. Basically for stab damage. I was thinking about bringing uh, Dragon Pulse or Z Drake Media yet again, but the problem with that is uh, like you can't really like stop, like you can't really hit everything and without like losing some form of coverage if you want to have Calm Mind. And I felt that having Calm Mind was more superior in this game than like uh, Back and Stab. And yes, it's. Dragon Stab pretty much allows me to hit Stormy and uh, Kirin B, let's say Dragon Pulse or and or uh, let's say uh, Kirin B and Stormy. Yeah, that's about it. Um, everything else like it just hits Rapian just slightly harder, and I just felt like you know it wasn't worth it, and I just rather want something else just to hit Magnezone. So yeah, that's why I have a uh, Hidden Power Ground. Empire Grounds basically for mons like Magnezone and Steelix to, to just do massive damage to them. Uh just uh pretty much donk on them, so yeah. Um not really much to say about Latios here, but it is very strong. Um I do have to say that the hidden power uh regarding the hidden powers, um I think they did change it for uh Wi Fi Draft League, so yeah. So I guess that I do have to keep in mind that like Mega Deancy may or may not speed tie me with me if he has Hidden Power Fire. If he doesn't have Hidden Power Fire, then he may speed tie with me. But then again, given how Showdown is kind of like is with Hidden Powers lately, 
I don't know if they like reflect this or not, so I'm hoping that you know what's weird is like for once I'm hoping that their the situation may be wrong. And it doesn't result in the speed tie, so yeah. By the way, I just I still have a scissor and a talent point to deal with this, so that was a weird divergent path, so here we have a uh, Sylveon with the same set. Um, I think the only difference is I had a little bit extra speed EVs just to uh, creep against uh, Kinkelder. Recouping me, so yeah. Um, with the speed EVs, I think I outpaced, I think, the more standard Kinkelders. I think that's like 56 or one right there, so. I could add a little bit more, but then it's like just taking away from Sylveon's bolt. And uh, by then I was like, yeah, there's no way he's going to add this much speed to Kinkelder. Since Kinkelder I think has base 45 and Sylveon's like base 60, so yeah. I was like, alright. Um, we'll just let it just, we'll let the game be decided from here, so. And also, um, I do have Hyper Voice just to like punish all substitutes. I just do major damage, which protect just to heal up certain Pokemon, so yeah. Uh, well, I get a leftovers recovery, so. Again, I, I really didn't uh, consider a lot with the Sylveon, but I will say is that it is probably the more integral member of this team in terms of my defense because uh, this is probably the one mod that could take a hit from the Ancy from Moonblast. But I gotta be careful with that, even with that, because uh, if it gets, I can't switch it in repeatedly. So if it gets chipped down too much, then uh, the Ancy is just gonna like punish me very hard. So. Or one of his mods will just kill me, like say Spear and BC free shock. So yeah, I do have Toxic just to wear down uh, Gelsent and uh, the uh, do I? Since I actually don't have a ways to break those two Pokemon, so and if I do get land the Toxics on Kiram and uh, Fancy before it negative evolves, that's fine. So yeah, here I have a uh, Crocodile with uh, Rocks, Earthquake, Knockoff, and Bulldoze. So. <laughs> But a much more bulkier EV spread. And the speed here is to outpace, I believe, uh Dolly uh Decidui. So if even if this thing, if a, if he has a Decidui that's a choice scarf, which he did bring last game, so yeah. Um I'm gonna be honest, I have a feeling that like Crocodile Like there is a good chance that I may just let my Crocodile's scarf get removed early game because like, the main reasoning is because I don't want to risk uh, mons like Latios, mons like Sylveon from taking damage. And it's Crocodile is probably, next to Scizor, like, the most important Pokemon. Like, probably, like, like first ahead, just slightly. Just because uh, um, every other lead I think of is pretty much countered or could be de dealt with if he leads correctly. And with Crocodile, it pretty much ensures that I always have the matchup. And I could always go for Earthquake, I could always go for like a, a quick knockoff, I could always go for rocks quickly, so... Before I have my item removed or whatever you have it, so... Or if I lose Crocodile early on, so... I know I'm saying this about Pokemon that's like... Like... Like, why are you saying this about Pokemon that's one of your win cons? That's true, but the thing is... My other win cons are... Alphame, Latios, and these other two I'm about, about to explain, so... Crocodile is pretty much more so like, um, is, I'll admit Crocodile is a wink on, but the thing is, um, it's more so like being able to do that extra damage or that extra, or being able to remove certain items, like say a light of the flame orb from the King Kelder or like the AV or, or like a choice scarf or whatever you have it. So that's why I feel like Crocodile is a lot more important in this game. I really wanted to bring a more support set, like, you know, that's not Scarf, but then I realized, you know, not having a, like, a Pokemon that's faster than Deancey might be problematic, so let's not name Talon Flame, so. And if I do lose my Scarf, my remedy for this is having Bulldoze, and Bulldoze basically allows me to reduce the speed by minus one speed, and with that, it's basically kind of like helping me and helping my matchup less so. Let's say he tries to go to like say Kirin B, and he has switched into run into rocks. Let's say he's around seventy percent. Goes to Kirin B, then forty five percent, and I go for well. Then again, that's not it's kind of a bad example. But let's say he's like slightly ahead. HP number. Let's say like eighty five or whatever. I go for bulldoze, 
weaken its speed or lower its speed by minus one, and I can guarantee I outspeed it, assuming I, you know, figure out the item and shit. So yeah. Same could be said with Starving because this actually does like Bulldoze does I think around the uh, 48% min damage to Starmie. And then with knockoff Earthquake, I could just go for another It's like me getting free damage onto like Starmie or Oko Lynx or or something else. So yeah. That's assuming if I get my item removed. So yeah. Um it sounds weird having a scarf Pokemon with Bulldoze, but um there's a good chance that my item is gonna get removed this game. Because I have to play around with Drapion and, and Kelder, so yeah. Um, but then again, that's probably what's gonna happen, so. Then we have our Scizor with the, uh... It's a, it's a, it's a much more, uh, Spadef set with, the uh, U-turn. Uh, knockoff, mostly support. And I'm not gonna lie, um, this is pretty much... I could probably run the same Scizor set with Adam and Nature. I have people with it really saying, oh, you're just wasting EVs and shit. Yeah, I know that. Um, the thing is, um, the reason why I'm running a lot of speed with Scizor is just to ensure that I pretty much know that Magnezone is Choice Scarf. So, like, I think Magnezone speed clocks like 123. Damn it. So, if I'm able to knock off or just U turn away, that's going to be helpful, especially like trying to like be able to like help support my team in general. And I do have enough attack investment to where, like, Bullet Punch can actually two-shot, like, uh, Kirin B no matter what, so yeah. But I think it's it's fair, so. Uh, U-turn's obviously there, push for momentum, and uh, knockoff, again, like, moving items, um, such as, like, the, uh, Kelder Slam Orb and, uh, any Scarfers or Lefties and whatnot, so. U-turn's nice just to pivot out of a certain situation, so yeah. Um, uh, this is more... This is also another Spadef wall I have in case uh, Sylveon gets worn down, but again, I have to pretty much scout for possible hidden fire fires and shit, so yeah. So, um, Scizor can actually clean, similar to Talonflame, but it's a lot more, like, like, subtle. Like, it can't automatically win the game, you know, compared to, like, maybe Talonflame or Bloody, but, like, but once his entire team is fairly weakened and I could just roost, dull, like, wear him down with Rook. With knockoff U turned in, yeah, I can do that. So, um, again, I don't really expect uh, uh, Scizor to do that much this game, but still, uh, it's pretty uh, important Pokemon to have. So, then we have uh, Manaphy, which, uh, to be honest, um, Manaphy is pretty much like the same set. Like, I think the only difference is that I outspeed uh, Kieran B, but, um, Wait a minute, I just noticed something. I mean, I don't know. Wait. Is it... Wait. Is it exactly the same thing? I could have sworn it's 161. Yep. Yeah, I'll speed uh, Kirim at 161. So basically, um, I'll speed Kirim. So. Um, the only difference from this set and the other sets is that I have a Scald. Since I don't have heal bill, so yeah. And also, like, since love, love... <laughs> that's another... Uh, I just repeated the same word. So, um, Basically, I'm just gonna be, like, scalding. Fishing for scald burns. Except for Kukelder. So Kukelder's likely gonna be flame orb. So within that case, I'll just spam Dazzling Flame. Scald, or whatever the hell it is. Especially if I'm Toglo boosted. Um, Manaphy can clean this game. Especially once everything is weakened. And it can also be a good pivot into certain Pokemon, so yeah. So yeah, given its bulk. Um, not much to say, but yeah. Like, Manaphy can take some hits. And if I can be able to set up Kyoglo, I could probably break some stuff, so yeah. So, that's that's my team, basically. So, we have Talonflame, Latios, Sylveon, Crocodile, Scizor, and uh, Manaphy, so yeah. Uh, pretty long uh, explanation video, so... Let's get right into the battle. Alright, so... We're here in the uh, KCBL final, so... For those of you who uh, skipped into the annotation, or went to the... Or just skipped this part of the video. Um, this is a quick quick uh, breakdown of my team, so... We have a uh, Choice Band Talonflame that's fast enough to outpace uh, Dark Magnezone, and most, and most of his stuff, like, you know... Uh, Raichu and uh, Starmie, like Mega Dancy. So we have a Latios with Psychic, 
Hidden Power Ground, Combine, Sylveon, which is pretty much a standard Cleric set, the only difference is that I have Heal Bill removed for Toxic. Uh, Scarf Crocodile set with uh, that's uh, Stealth Rock, Starchquake, Knockoff, Bulldoze, Scizor with U Turn, Knockoff, Bullet Punch, and uh, Roost, that's more specially defensive, and uh, Talon Globe Manaphy, so with uh, Water, like Fairy, and Ghost Coverage, so yeah. Um, so looking at his team, I see basically he brought the same team composition. The only difference is that he brought uh, Raichu over uh, <laughs> Magnezone. So um, basically, uh, it will be interesting to see why he brought this Raichu. Um, but the rest of his team is pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, um, it's just that the uh, with this Raichu, I'm like thinking, okay, so what does he, does he have with this guy? Like, because obviously he has no, uh, um, obviously, like, looking at his squad, like, Sylveon looks very, very strong versus his team. If I get rid of, uh, let's say, stuff, stuff like, uh, um, Drapion and, uh, Conkeldor and, uh, Kirin B, assuming those two, like, are just annoying in general, so yeah. Um, so looking at it, so looking for, uh, leads here, I... Pretty much already knew which one I was gonna go with for one, and I figured to Crocodile is probably my best lead since I get Intimidate off and I can do whatever the hell I want. Just as I explained in my uh, debriefing of the team, so whether I go for Earthquake, Knock Off, or Rocks, and I just have like I can get uh, Cheeky Oko, so yeah. So basically, I'm just gonna go off and lead Crocodile as he goes into his Kirin B. So now having this attack. Uh, drop is very important because this allows me to ensure that Kirin B is not going to like Like if he goes for Z free shock, I could just really switch into the Sil Sylveon or Scizor really quickly. So yeah um as uh, There's not really much I can do uh, Against Crocodile versus Kirin. Like I know I'm gonna switch out. It's just that which of the two Pokemon I'm gonna switch into like Sylveon or Scizor and I know that's gonna invite in one of the two is gonna invite in Kinkelder and Drapion, so I figure that I'm like, you know what, I, I don't want Kinkel to come in just yet. So I'm just going to go into uh, Sylveon. Just hope that he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't go for his move immediately. Goes for the Ice Beam, and I don't get frozen. So I get some leftovers here. So here, I actually make a very... I make somewhat of a weird call, and uh, I actually go for a Wish. Because I wanted to see what else he... It's sort of like, kind of like protecting at the same time, so... Uh, I know that like C free shock won't Oko me, but at the same time, if he goes for it now, then it's not gonna kill me. So he probably is not ex like he probably may or may not expect that like to Oko. So like then again, like he has minus one attack drop, so he's probably gonna switch out. So I figured, you know what, I might as well just get something in whoever it is coming in for the next turn, like after I go for wish for free. So. Here I decide, you know, I'm just gonna go for my wish. As he goes too hard into Drapion or Benny, so I think as you can see, these are like main, mainly people from all the uh, from all the people I battled in this league yet. So, or in case of deal, so um, I go for the wish, and at this point I'm like, all right, so who am I gonna switch into? And again, I don't want to risk losing a lot of HP on Scizor. You know, I don't haven't really scouted for hidden power. For uh, Fire Fang or for like maybe SD or whatnot, so um, he could do. He could just set up T spikes if he wants to. So I really have, and I don't want to lose my items on on Talonflame and or get damage on Latios or like lose my Papa Berry for the Manaphy. So it's like at this point I'm like, well, I'm in a I'm in a sort of in a pickle. So and yeah, I'm kind of have to like force to like lose my item here, but it's kind of like a necessary uh, for sacrifice. So. Here, I'm just going to go into my Crocodile. At least I'm going to be healthy uh, to whatever he does. So, goes for knockoff. Not going to do him that much. So, I'm going to be healthier. So, this turn. So, now at least I have a I have a turn where, like, Crocodile has the advantage once again. So, at this point, all I can do right now is decide what move do I want to go for. I Because I can go for Rocks. I can go for Earthquake. I can go for knockoff. And I can go for Bulldoze. Expecting, let's say, like... Like the last option, I could also I go for that expecting, let's say, uh, Kirin B or like Starmie. So I figured like the best option for me was going for rocks, 
Just because, like, this is probably the best time I could get it up against most of the squad. Because most of these Pokemon can kill Crookedile no matter what, so... And I was already gonna have to, like, pretty much get rocks up in order in the begin with in the first place, so yeah. So, my main plan is to just try to keep well, offensive pressure against this team. And even if he tries to rapid spin with Rapid Starmie, like, one, I already know that he doesn't have some coverage option or recovery. And I could also pressure it with Talon Flame, since or Ladio, or Sizz, or Manaphy, whatever, so yeah. So I figured, I go for, uh, I'm gonna go for my rock since this is my best chance to get it. But he actually makes a great play, goes to Kukelder, so... As he'll be able to activate the knock, the, uh, the flame orb, so... I could've went for knockoff, but again, like, he makes a great play. Or hell, even gone for damage. Now, I think I, this is probably gonna be, like, the more... The biggest turn in this game, so as you're about to see. Um, now, this is like pretty much like the one turn where I pretty much was thinking the most, and I was debating whether to go for the uh, Sylveon switch in or just stay in with Crocodile. And honestly, this is the one situation I was like talking about. Like, Kinkelder is like pretty much very huge threat to my team, no matter what you, s you see it. And Crocodile. Like, at this point, I felt like it's done its job. Like, I'm, like, at least, like, four of these, four or five of these Pokemon are able to, like, check Crooked out in some fashion. Like, you know, even this Kinkel that you see on the screen, so. Um, um, so I pretty much decide, okay, if if Kinkelder is going to go for Facade or Poison Jab or whatever the hell, he, or Knockoff, he's going to go for it now. And I'm going to, and he's going to think that I'll try to... I'll try to preserve like this Crookedile. So in this situation, I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna predict him to not go for uh, uh, Drain Punch. He could go for Mock Punch as well, but I will live the hit with my uh, EV spread. So, um, which is really nice. Um, so I decided, you know what? The best option is just to go for Earthquake, and I do 48% as he goes for a Knockoff. And I think he was like, expecting me to go switch into Latios or Talon Flame. So. I could have also swapped in Sylveon, but getting, but again, now I'm in another sort of weird 50-50 against this Kinkelder, so, um, but at this point, I'm like, alright, I, I know that Earthquake will definitely kill Kinkelder, because the burn damage just put it just below range of, like, possible low kill rage, but it depends on, you know, like, whether he is, like, um, also defensive as well, so yeah, but based off the damage, I was like, yeah, he, may, he might be offensive, but Kinkelder would, like, you know, but near max attack, so at this point I'm like, all right, so do I go switch into Sylveon or do I go for my Earthquake again? So, um, again, I I know that Sylveon is pretty much one of my best at win cons this game, and uh, Crocodile can't really like. Okay, at this point he has like like Astro has like two options, which is the Mach Punch, Dream Punch, or just go for the Facade or Knock Off or like one of the his coverage options if he has it. So. I decide, you know what, I'm gonna stay in and just go for Earthquake again. And just, uh, pretty much ensure that- I've gotten damage on Kinkelder. I got really good damage on him. So, now he's gonna be very low to where, like, a Dazzling Gleam, or Psychic, Brave Bird, Hyper Voice. Hell, even bolt two Bullet Punches on two Switch-Ins, on a Switch-In with Sizzle will be able to knock him out. So, yeah. I'm just gonna go for Earthquake as, as you see, I'm able to knock out Kinkelder, which is Earthquake, so... And yeah, I just got rid of some of the biggest threat on the, his team, as he just goes into another big threat, so yeah. Uh, his Kirim, so... I was kind of surprised he went to Kirim, because I'm thinking right now, like, wait a minute, is this thing Scarfed? <laughs> and why he didn't go to, to something like uh, Dancy or Starmie, but I'm not going to question it, so... Um, either way, um, his Kirim is here, and I'm like, okay... I'm thinking, like, obviously Kirim outspeeds me naturally, so... And I'm just very curious as to why, like, it's just, he just switched it in right there and there. And I'm like, hmm, maybe he just doesn't, he doesn't want to risk losing, uh, Starmie or something to, like, uh, to, uh, let's say Talonflame, or, not Talonflame, but, like, maybe, like, Sylveon or something like that, so, yeah. Um, so, I'm, like, the, I'm debating right here, and I'm like, okay, if he is indeed Scarf, and he just swapped it in like that, I'm like, Maybe I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna go into uh, Spanifee. 
And uh, if he's not scarfed, I'll at least know. Well, we already know that he's not life orb, so yeah. But based off the damage, it's a very like strong indication to me, like that this uh, Kyurem is like offensive with like basically it with with more inc likelihood of like it having more physical attack than uh, special attack EV. So yeah. Um. So basically, I'm just excited. You know, I'm just gonna go into uh, Manaphy here. As you see, he goes for Hidden Power Fire, so based off the coverage, I'm like, alright, this thing has to be Scarfed. <laughs> or something, or some weird Kira and set, so yeah. Um, I'm already assuming that this thing is Scarfed, as he does switch out. And I decided, you know, I'm just going to go for the Dazzling Gleam. He goes to Raichu, as I'm able to get some good hit damage with uh, 32 uh, invest, uh, damage, especially with the rocks up, so... Um, now Raichu is very pretty much very close to like uh, BP range with Scizor, so or Talonflame's Brave Birds, so yeah, or Flare Blitz if you ask me. So um, getting that chip off is really nice since now um, I'm able to ensure that uh, that I don't, like something one of my mods can revenge kill this Raichu. So yeah, and especially the fact that Kiram has it has to switch in again. So I know for a fact that Starmie's gonna try to switch in no matter what. So. Here I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go for uh, Sylveon, try to get some recovery for some of my mons, as he goes for the Volt Switch, and he goes for Drapion, and gets some chip here. So, I do get some recovery, so yeah. Um, here I decide, okay, so, what Pokemon could I switch into? And honestly, I still had a, a Crocodile in the, on the field, I'm like, yeah, I could do that. Um, but I didn't want to, like, again, I don't want to lose Sylveon this right now, because I know that I could take on... Dancy and Starmie and Raichu and whatnot, so um basically all I know is that I need to get rid of this uh Drapion for this on the that's on the field right now, so um just because like Sylveon can actually uh hold like pretty much carry me to victory if I can play correctly, so um I decide, you know what, I'm gonna go f straight to Crocodile, but he actually goes into Diancy, making a great double switch. As of course he's gonna get, I won't be able to intimidate him with the him having clear body. So yeah. So at this point I'm like, all right, I'm gonna sack Crocodile. But before I sack it, I'm just gonna be like, I'm gonna just try to be cheeky and go for a bulldoze. As he tries to be cheeky himself and just go for a substitute. And uh, yeah, um, this actually puts me in a very interesting spot because I'm not so sure if he knows that like I could just kill Dancy it again with another. If he tries to go for another sub again with the, uh, he said Sylveon could just kill it with the uh, hybrid voice. So yeah. Um. So at this point, I'm pretty much debating on actually saving Crocodile yet again because I'm looking at my team and I'm looking at Deancey and Deancey's already been chipped to where Blood Punch will ensure the knockout, even if he's like you know, plus two like Diamond Storm defense boosted. So yeah, and. Also, the fact that he has sub inclin inclines to me that he also has Hidden Power Fire because you don't run hit substitute when uh, without like set coverage, especially with, like in our, our semi our, our, in my semifinals game against Knight. So I'm like already I'm already like suspecting this might be, and also the name itself, Jake. Um, that yeah, this might be Hidden Power Fire. It would make sense. Um, so. I kind I kind of predict him to actually go for like a, a fairy or like move or just switch out. So I go hard into Talonflame as he actually goes for sub again, but he actually puts himself dangerously low to where um if he does not have a rock coverage, let's say like uh let's say like like Power Gem or Diamond Storm, he's gonna get two shot at by Brave Bird no matter what. So at this point, two Brave Birds is like I could pretty much I could pretty much get two kills. Like right now, if I don't, if he doesn't have like Starfur or if this thing doesn't have like a, a rock move, like you know, Fire Gem or Diamond Storm, of course I have to break the, the sub and I will probably lose HP. But still, this is like, and also, like, Delvion is like Hyper Voice pretty much like Oko's Diancy at, from this range, so yeah. Um, so at this point, I'm like, all right, so I'm just gonna go for my uh, Brave Bird and just go for the Brave. You're gonna crit, but that doesn't really matter because um, I'm gonna die anyway to Diamond Storm, and I go to Scizor. Um, um, 
I don't I don't think the crit mattered as as much as you think. So um the crit pretty much ensured that well it doesn't really ensure anything. Um if I had it against the if he was like damn it Dancy when it was like not um when it was not like, you know <laughs> beyond the sub, I may have just gone for Steel Wing if I wanted to, so yeah. Um but again, like if, if let's say even if he did have that, so even if he did have that, I could have just gone to Sylveon. But I go he, here since I get a free switch in, I'm like, all right, I could go, I could go into Scizor and not risk a hidden power fire here. So um, I still don't want to switch into Sylveon just yet because I think uh, if I could get Sylveon healthy again with the wishes, I could start spamming hyper voices and just going for hit, wish protect and wish protect. So yeah, um, here I decide you know I'm just gonna go for my bullet punch as he actually stays in. And I, he lets me take this Dancy out, so now he comes out the Grapion. So at this point, this game is looking very, very like uh, winnable. So um, again, like I still have a Crooked Owl in the field, so I'm just gonna go hard into Crooked Owl. And at this point, he has a lot of Pokemon that doesn't really appreciate taking a Bulldoze. So I could just spam Bulldoze, and they could just get another kill, like like that. So. And I probably confirm which one of this Pokemon is scarfed or whatnot, so yeah. Um so at this point I'm just gonna click Bulldoze and uh and I just get like 45% on this Starmie. And I go for Earthquake and I knock out this Starmie. So I have a huge threat out of the way. Starmie and Rocks are there to stay for the rest of the game, so at this point Crooked has done its job. And it's pretty much like been like such a huge help like for me. It's taking out the Conkelder and the and just uh, like like having fun against Drapion and now killing the Starmie. So at this point, uh, Kira B is sent out and it's already within range of Bullet Punch, unless he's like defensively invested. So yeah, um, at this point I'm like, all right, you can have my Crocodile. So here I'm just gonna go for uh, Bullet Punch. As uh, as you can see, like Bullet Punches with two Bullet Punches will be able to knock out this right here. So I just got one other Pokemon down. Just two more to go. And off comes this uh, Drapion, he goes for Fire Fang, and I'm like, alright, I'm just going to see what item you have, in case you were I pop a berry or whatever the hell it is, so. Turns out he's AV, and I'm like, alright, that makes sense, because I had Latios and Manaphy, so. Now, I don't want to risk this or anymore, and I'm just going to go hard into Manaphy, or Blue, just to close out this game. He goes for Fire Fang, and I'm just going to go for Skulls, trying to go for Skull Burns, and just try to see if, uh, uh, indeed, that Kira is scarfed. But either way, like at this point, we have enough resources to win this game and carry it home. So, yeah. And Kira comes out. He's at twenty-seven percent. And I'm just gonna go for Dazzling Gleam. Turns out he wasn't scarfed. But yeah. And pretty much, yeah. That's GG. And we pretty much won another championship. So, um, GG's to Astro Crystal or Poke Clips. As we are now your KCBL season, um, I'd say uh, season two uh, champions. I think after like failing to like, uh, what's my else right there? But after failing to get like the championship in uh, season one, I felt like um, I wanted to come back a lot stronger for this season. And yeah, um, I know this was kind of with the same team I brought from like the last se or drafted like last season. But still, I felt that the squad we had was great, had decent enough to do it again. So yeah, um, for this battle, I I want to say like uh, this like um, this was like pretty much one of the more like I guess you could say like one of the more dominant battles or one of the more closer games we had because um, of course we had another one like uh, in DGBA where like that that game came down to like if uh, well, well spoilers. So. For those of you want to don't want to hear that, but that game really came down to a bunch of like 50-50s and uh, ultimately a damage roll that was like heavily in my favor. So and this time I really wanted to make sure that like the game was in my favor the whole time. So yeah, and try to take and if I did have the chance to win, I will take the chance to win. So I'm not so sure if I'm making sense, but all I no all I care is I won a title. So <laughs> all right, so that, okay, enough about that. So. Like, 
I will say that Love had a very good run throughout during playoffs. Like he actually beat out uh, Mav, who was the champion for last season. And that was a good chance I was actually gonna battle Mav as well. But Love was able to beat him in a very, very close game where he just his jealousy was able to clutch out the battle, so and yeah, like he had some very close games throughout this playoffs run as well, so um I think the Kira B was probably and Kinkeldo were probably the biggest like threats to like in his team, they were like definitely his uh, main offensive bonds and MVPs. So, of course, uh, on the end, we were able to figure out a way to deal with like both Kieran B and uh, King Keller. So, yeah. If I had to say who was the MVP or the finals MVP for this game, obviously it has to be Crocodile. And of course, um, of course, we have to go talk about that turn, like where I was Crocodile versus King Keller, like. I pretty much had to like go for like damage onto Kunkelder no matter what because I didn't want to risk Ladio, Sylveon, Talonflame, and Sil like Scizor or like Manaphy that early in the game. And not only that, the Kunkelder already excuse me already has a on like how to say it um already has like a flame more boost so. We have to ensure that like Kinkelder has been taken out or has damage on it, so that's why I made those two predictions where like I was able to get rid of Kinkelder. It turns out it was like a 98% chance to uh, Oko him with flame with flame orb damage, you know, with burn damage and whatnot or rocks. Um, but still, it was it was heavily in my favor to like Oko the Kinkelder from the range it was at. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take it. Um, it was close to 100%, so I was like, yeah. And it was like, if he gets me with the Drain Punch, he gets me. But I get a free switch into Talonflame or Sylveon or Latios. Either way, so. And if he doesn't get me, then I just got huge amount of damage on Kinkelder. That's going to put him in range of, like, let's say, if two bullet punches from Scizor or, like, an attack from set three Pokemon or Manaphy. So, yeah. Well, anyways, um, I will, like, to, t to close out this video... Um, this was very, I'll admit, this was a very tense finals. As uh, I will admit, the games really did came down to those predictions, but like, again, we had to make them to in order to win, so. Um, and also, not only that, um, I have to say, like, props to, like, Love as well, since uh, he was able to, like, uh, he had, like, a very good rate run as well, so, um. And his team was pretty uh, threatening, if you ask me. Having some of the more threatening uh, dragon, like Steel Dragon Fairy Core, I've seen, and me facing another Lancy and Drapion matchup. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I just noticed that like all the Pokemon named in it, it Love's uh, team are are based off of people I've faced in like deep, uh, KCBL or in the or in the server that we're in. So yeah. So, anyways. Uh, wrap things up, the El Neo Kings are champions once again, so, um, and we pretty much get another chip, so, hopefully, um, another season will be on the horizon very soon, so, um, but I'll, I'll talk about that when, uh, I'll talk about some stuff once we get to the update video, so anyways, uh, um, hope you guys enjoyed this this uh, run we have in the KCBL season two. It's sort of our redemption season. So, anyways, I'll catch you guys guys later. So, peace.